Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We are so glad that you are here to worship with us today. Along with our Sunday worship, Founders MCC offers a rich assortment of personal and spiritual enrichment classes, a variety of activities, and a number of support groups to help us grow along the way. Don't forget to visit the information and welcome table in the courtyard today or pick up one of the Connections flyers to find out more. Please don't miss out on the information and announcements in your bulletin, which will make your connection with Founders more meaningful. Check out our website, MCCLA. And find us also on Facebook. And join us in making Founders MCC your one-stop spiritual portal. This is your first Sunday at Founders. You are our guest. We would like to extend an especially warm welcome. After today's worship service, please join us for refreshments in the courtyard. Visit the Welcome and Information Center. And meet some new friends. We'd love to answer your question, give you a tour of the building, or serve you a cup of coffee. Or a cup of tea. In just a few moments, the ushers will pass out our welcome tablet. We want everyone to sign in today and let us know how we can best serve you. If you're joining us online, we want to hear from you as well. Look for the check-in information on the homepage of our website. And let us know that you're joining us. Founders MCC is a place of diverse and welcome. A place of healing and acceptance. A place of deep spirituality and transformation. A place of joy and love. Welcome to Founders Metropolitan Community Church, Los, Los Angeles. Angeles.
Friends, every praise is to our God. Every thanksgiving is to our God. Everything about us and within us extols the name of God this morning. As we come into this house of worship, we acknowledge the God that is in us. We acknowledge the presence of the Spirit that continues to illuminate our pathway and creates for us the ways of justice and of peace. So be with us on this Sabbath, on this Sunday, as we gather in this holy place, as we gather our holy bodies, one with the other, the sacredness of God explored and excited in us this day. So shape us, anoint us, bless us, forgive us. May your grace be sufficient for each and every one of us, knowing that we have been created in your divine and loving image, so that in that image we express you in the world. So now in this moment, God, as we place our feet on holy ground, as we bring our whole lives into this place, the invitation not to leave anything outside, but to bring it within, so that it may be touched and refreshed and renewed by your Spirit. May God be honored, therefore, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Please be seated. It is, as always, a joy to welcome you to worship as we gather on this beautiful Sunday morning, and I am still grateful uh, to a God who hears our prayers. Uh, a God who has allowed the sun to rise and the sun to set, um, and the God who has allowed for this day to be just about 30 degrees cooler uh, than it was this time last week um, as we continue to await our new air conditioning in our church. So uh, let's give God a hand praise this morning. And it will not be long before all of the air conditioning is up and running and we'll continue with the uh, other renovations of our church building, but we are glad that you are here today. I want to welcome you, especially if you are worshiping with us for the very first time this morning. Uh, we know that you have a choice in worshiping communities, but we are so glad that you've chosen to be present with us today. I wonder if you would indulge my spirit if indeed you're with us for the very first time today. I wonder if you would just raise your hand, keep it up for a moment so that we can see you, so that we can welcome uh, you to worship this morning. Our ushers will get to you, but please do accept this flower and a welcome pack as our way of acknowledging your presence amongst us. Inside the welcome pack, you'll find lots more information about our church and about our community, uh, ways in which you can get connected with each and every one of us. We believe that church is not just about attendance on Sunday, uh, but church is really about building the community of who God is and who God can be as we are being transformed ourselves and as we therefore transform the world. So if you're looking for a spiritual home this morning, uh, we sincerely hope that you may have found it with us here at Founders Metropolitan Community Church. We also want to acknowledge the many of our own community who are elf traveling for this Memorial Day weekend, and so we pray Traveler's mercies upon them. And if you are visiting Los Angeles uh, for this Memorial Day weekend, uh, we are delighted that you chose to make Founders MCC one of your stops uh, during your uh, uh, Memorial Day weekend want to welcome also uh, all those who are worshiping with us online this morning. Uh, we know that we have about 500 folks who worship with us regularly on a Sunday morning here at Founders MCC from all over the world. And so we extend a very special welcome to you this morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we're glad that you make MCC here in Los Angeles your spiritual portal uh, for all of your spiritual needs wherever you are around the globe. And we know that we have folks who worship with us from as far away as the outback in Australia, um, in Italy. Uh, we know that we have some folks worshiping with us today uh, in Singapore um, and many other places around the world. And this is a great ministry that we're able to offer uh, to the world as we gather in worship this morning. Our ushers have passed out the welcome tablets, so please do sign in for us, whether this is your first time with us or whether it's your thousandth time with us. Uh, we certainly want to know that you have been with us today. And we also want to know how we may be able to minister effectively with and for you. So if you're in need of pastoral care, 
uh, please do check the box that says would like a member of the staff to call and we'll follow up with you as quickly as possible. Of course, if you're in need of emergency pastoral care today, please know that you are loved and that you are worthy to speak with any one of us that serve on the dais this morning directly after worship and we'll spend a few moments with you and then if need be, make a follow-up appointment as well so that we can be in community one with the other. But we extend that welcome to you. And for those of you who are worshiping online, there are a couple of times that you can join us in worship this morning especially. Uh, first of all, later on in the service, we do uh, celebrate communion here in our church. And we invite you right now to go and find uh, perhaps a piece of bread or some juice or anything that might constitute that for you. And then when we consecrate communion in our building, we invite you to extend your arm to your communion table so that you might receive communion at the same time as we do here in our church building. Also, we do receive an offering at all worship services and our folks online, uh, you can also participate with us in that ministry. We uh, want to extend this ministry to beyond what we are already doing. And so if you would like to support our ministry, uh, you can use the Donate Now sign on your website and you'll be able to donate your offering in the same way as we invite all those in our congregation to invite, uh, to give and to serve those. That's a good reminder if you have a cell phone on you this morning, if you could take it out and move it to silent um, so that we can have some uninterrupted worship time this morning. Of course, we don't want you to turn your phones off. We want you to check in on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, you can take photographs and selfies and post them online. Uh, if something of inspiration just happens during worship, let your friends know that you received that inspiration from the God that is worshiping with us this morning here at Founders and let them know what that inspirational word is and help them to know that there is a spiritual place that they are welcome to as well as we gather this morning in this place. I uh, am very, very grateful for Facebook myself because I understand that uh, one of my friends on Facebook is here this morning, uh, Pastor Mary Bradshaw. Mary Jo Bradshaw is with us this morning. Um, I believe she is. Um, if you are Mary Jo Bradshaw, perhaps she'll arrive in just a few moments. But she told me she was going to be worshiping with us this morning. Um, so, well, there you go. Facebook doesn't always tell the truth. There we go. <laughs> We've been celebrating uh, many things, quickly moving on. We've been celebrating many things uh, here at uh, Founders MCC during this period um, of, um, of, uh, of uh, May. And one of those things that we have been celebrating uh, is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so uh, we have been uh, demonstrating that through many different mediums this, this week, uh, this month. And so if you turn your attention to the screens, we have just a quick presentation um, of some of our work around mental health and mental health awareness. My name is uh, Lisa Arnold and I've been with uh, Founders MCC since 2008. My experience with mental health has been on several levels. Um, most intimate would perhaps be the destruction, watching the destruction of my uh, mother's life as an alcoholic, which then led to suicide. I've also had intimate experience with mental health is through my own journey and my own healing. And um, I think this work is really important because I believe that people are ex out there experiencing a lot of pain and we have the resources and the, tech and the, uh, the research today where there's enough resources where people do not have to live with the pain that they're actually living with today. The way that Founders MCC has supported my well-being is strictly by allowing me a place where I can come and worship on a weekly basis. Um, it has been my experience that having the faith that I have and developing the relationship with God that I have, that it is healed me tremendously and I firmly believe that all healing can be done with God and with God utilizing other people and putting them in our lives. I believe that most people that come to our church are seeking something outside of themselves and people that have mental health issues their own mind cannot fix their own mind cannot fix their uh, their illness. And a lot of times I believe that people isolate and they think they can do it on their own and it's, it's not possible. Um, you need outside support and I believe that ultimately um, it's a spiritual malady and finding a power greater than ourselves that can restore us to sanity mm -hmm. is the purpose of the church. 
What I always have found interesting is that when people are physically ill or they've broken an arm, somebody will come up to them and say, wow, you know, what happened to your arm? Are you okay? And they're very compassionate. Mm -hmm. When it comes to mental health, mental health can be invisible. And it doesn't mean that people are in any less pain with mental health than they are with a broken arm. It's just that we frequently can't see it. And it, if, if everybody's mental health was to show, I think we would be amazed at how many people are in tremendous pain and the level of compassion that we can have for these people. And I think by breaking the stigma one person at a time, it, it will allow people to feel the freedom to be able to come out and say, I have mental illness. It's, I think it's very freeing uh, to be able to admit to mental illness, and I believe that that is how the healing can begin, is when one can say, I have a mental health issue, and then the healing can begin. And ultimately, my goal is that people would be able to see that there are many, many people in the LGBT community that have mental illness. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be afraid of. And that it can be healed. And that people can live productive, peaceful lives with a lot of hope, peace, love, and joy. And that is what I hope to bring to the team. Amen. If you're a member of the new mental health team and the hope groups of our church and you'd like to self-identify, if you would just rise so that we can acknowledge you and say thank you for your ministry amongst us. Pastor Mary, uh, Mary Jo Bradshaw, who's with us this morning. It really was not the voices in my head. Let's turn to one another now and offer a sign of peace, a sign of welcome, as we affirm God is with us. God bless you. Okay, that's enough already. You'll get a lot more time after worship this morning. Before we go into our sacred text, uh, we have the great honor of being able to welcome new members into our congregation this morning. Uh, those folks who have decided that it is time for them to step up and to be uh, formally uh, members of our church. Uh, we believe that in our congregation that when you assign yourself to become a full member, and of course just you're not a member doesn't make you any less full, but to become a member of the church that you are taking off the bib and putting on the apron. It means that we're taking off the, the need for us always to be ministered to and getting ready to be able to be of service and ministry to the world and to one another. And so we have uh, three people coming into membership, four people coming into membership, but two folks who previously wished to be baptized this morning. Uh, so we're going to bring those two up first, and then we're going to bring the rest into membership. So uh, Kurt and PJ, if you would come and join us up front right now, and let's welcome them as they... Then, friends, we join all who have gone before us, the children of Israel, John the baptizer, Jesus, the great teacher of all women and men and of all lands, joining in your presence to bless this water with the healing and with your love. And so I ask you, Kurt and PJ, do you embrace the unconditional love of the universe of God, creator Christ, spirit? and promise to create a home that celebrates and teaches this love to your family and friends. So would you please say, 
I do. And are you committing your life and your spiritual journey to Jesus the Christ? And are you willing to reject those things that have hurt you, that you have hurt others with? And are you willing to live a God-filled life to the best of your ability to bring healing to yourselves and to others to live in God's love? If so, would you please say, it is. So may your eyes always, your ears always hear the beauty of creation. May your mind always be open. May your eyes only see truth and your mouth only speak love. May your hands build bridges. May your feet journey into new lands. Excuse me one moment. And may your heart be filled with love. And we baptize you. In the name of God who is our creator, Jesus who is our redeemer, and with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we baptize you in the name of God, who is our creator, Jesus, who is our redeemer, and with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, congratulate these folks who have been baptized this morning. So, so now I'm going to ask uh, Ricky and James if you would join uh, PJ and Kurt this morning so that we can welcome you into membership this morning. So in any church, there is a reciprocal relationship. Uh, there is a covenant that we make with those who become members, and there is a covenant that those who become members make with the church. And so I ask you this morning, do you commit that Founders MCC will be your church home, respecting and honoring it as such, affirming the mission, vision, core values, and goals of Founders Metropolitan Community Church? If so, please say, I do. I do. It's like a wedding. <laughs> will you allow yourself to grow spiritually with us, seeking out opportunities for growth through worship, prayer, teachings, and community? If so, please say, I will. I will. Do you freely choose to offer your gifts by volunteering in ministry, as well as making a pledge to be a financial steward of your church home? Please say, I do. I do. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> and do you affirm that you also have a role in nurturing the growth and development of this church by your presence, participation, and gifts? If so, again, please say, I do. I do. And to us, the congregation, I ask you, do you covenant with our new members to support them in their journey with Founders MCC, providing a caring, compassionate, and at times challenging community of faith in which they may grow and participate fully? If so, would you please say, we will. We will. And will you support them in being the best that they can be in life and in this church, acknowledging that they are the, di the divine sons of God, brothers in Christ. If so, would you please say, we will. We will. And let us welcome our new members into our church.
A scripture reading from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 21 from the New International Version. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask God, and you will be given another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept this spirit because it neither sees nor knows it. But you know the spirit, and the spirit lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before the long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in God, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by God, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Hear what the Spirit says today. So before I get into the word this morning, I want to remind ourselves, of course, it is Memorial Day weekend, and it's incumbent upon us to remember all those who have served and who are serving in active service in the United States of America and around the world. Now, I understand that as a congregation, we hope one day for a day of peace, 
uh, for a day in which we will all live in unity, and that is not just as countries and the nations, but that's also as peoples, that we might be able to acknowledge our unity and our diversity. But we must acknowledge those who stand on the front lines in so many different places and who yield their lives in service. And at the same time, as a justice congregation, we must call upon the government and we must call upon those with legislative power to begin a process by which those who have served demand and receive the services that they respect and need, especially those who are coming back from active service and are still diagnosed with post-traumatic distress order, uh, those who we have heard just recently in the news who have been waiting months just to see a doctor in the VA, and some of whom have died just waiting to see a doctor. That is not justice, and that is not what they deserve. And so whilst we remember them, we call upon our church, our people, for justice and for peace, and to acknowledge that we are in this together, each and every one of us. So may we pray for that justice. At the same time, may we pray ultimately that we would not need armed forces anywhere in the world, so that ultimately we might respect one another, our cultures and our differences, as hard as that may be, and to seek a higher road upon which we might live in harmony, God's way of living in peace. And so it is. And so it is. Now join with me in a moment of prayer. Almighty and loving and gracious one, thank you for your word that continues to demonstrate your will and just demonstrate your presence in this world. Thank you for our lives as we gather this morning in this congregation and via the internet around the globe, that we as people of faith and good conscience come before you to seek out your word for us this day. And in that word might illuminate our pathway and pathways so that we may ultimately be those who are in the ways of Jesus. Thank you that we have that clear demonstration of those who followed you, and we stand in that line this morning and pray that through this word that you would open our hearts and minds to a more, most excellent way, a way that is of you. And now, God, I pray that you would be with me, touch my lips, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, in whom we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're just a couple of weeks away from the celebration of Pentecost in the Christian church. And for us at Founders MCC, uh, Pentecost falls on the same weekend as Pride Weekend. And so many of us will be uh, worshiping here on Saturday evening uh, rather than on Sunday. Uh, Saturday evening we'll gather for our pride worship service, which also will be Pentecost. Uh, and we'll gather here at 5 o'clock for an all-church celebration. And then on the Sunday morning, we'll be gathering with our interreligious partners um, as we gather on Santa Monica Boulevard uh, down, in Los down in West Hollywood. Uh, we will bless the parade route, and we will celebrate with our religious partners what it means for us to be symbols of hope and courage, specifically for the LGBTQIAATSSGL community, um, who will be... Um, who will be uh, marching with us. Now, last year, several of our... Uh, yeah, I know, we're still getting through the alphabet over here, but uh, um, several, of our, uh, several of our straight allies amongst our congregation uh, joined us in that march, and uh, I know that for many it was their first experience, and uh, I know that they've already told me that they just can't wait to get out and parade again this year, so I am looking forward to this experience of being together uh, the whole church celebrating uh, who we are as God's individuals and God's divine presence in the world. And so we are also in June, we'll be share, starting a new sermon series uh, called uh, Sex, God, Faith, and Culture. 
uh, meeting at the intersections um, as we celebrate this uh, notion that as people of faith we are called together our sexuality and our spirituality and seeing them both as whole and both of them as good. Um, and so we want to encourage you to be around in June so that you can share in these sermons and to share in this experience as we dive into some of the tough questions, especially those of us who come from sex-negative positions in our lives, about how it was all ordered at the very beginning and who God is within us today. And that's kind of very mindful for us because the that's experience of Pentecost, which we'll talk about more in two weeks' time, but the experience of Pentecost was that time when Jesus had already left the earth, had ascended into heaven, and from that place promised this divine friend, this divine paraclete, this divine spirit that would be poured out upon those early disciples. And the Acts of the Apostles tells us the story of what it was like that day when they gathered in that upper room one more time. Now, we don't know if it was the same upper room that they'd always been in all those times. If it was, it was a very holy upper room because a lot of experiences happened there. Uh, but we know that they were gathered in this upper room and sometimes they were gathered out of fear, sometimes they were gathered out of excitement, sometimes they were gathered because they wanted to be together in community. I think that's a bit like the early church and a bit like our church today, uh, that we gather for many different reasons, but they gathered on this day. And on this day, it was that promised spirit that descended upon them like the dove. And Scripture tells us that it bounced upon them and uh, split, and it became like this, this fire that was above their head. And suddenly, as they opened their mouths, out came all different kinds of languages, languages that they'd not learned, languages that they obviously had heard, but they had not learned for themselves. But they went, were forced out of this room into the streets, and it just so happened in Jerusalem at that time. Uh, there were people from all over uh, the Judea, they in the areas and the Decapolis, uh, they had gathered together and they heard each in their own language this good news of Jesus. It was in some ways the very foundation, the very beginning of what it meant to be a follower of Jesus as they went out into the streets and shared this good news. But this scripture is a fulfillment of the scripture that we heard this morning from this gospel reading. It was a fulfillment when Jesus said, um, I will send you this promised, this, this promised friend, this promised spirit. And as I send you this spirit, you will be assured that I am in you and you are in me. That you will be assured without a shadow of a doubt that not only have I not left you, but I have embodied you. That the fullness of this Holy Spirit, this gift that was to be promised to us and promised to the early church and continues to be promised to us today, more than 2,000 years later, is that same Spirit that filled those early disciples. It was the same Spirit that was with Jesus. It was the same Spirit that enabled Jesus to claim His authority and relationship with God, that direct relationship. We somehow call it Father today, but really Jesus talked more about Abba, about that Papa, about that relationship of intimacy that that Jesus had with God's self, and it's that same relationship that God promises to have with us through this Holy Spirit, the God that is in us, the God that rests in us, the God that fills us, the God that implores us, the God that leads us is the same Spirit of Jesus. You know, it's, it's kind of remarkable that we in the Christian church today have kind of downplayed this experience of, of this God in us. We've downplayed this experience because for so many of us, we search all over the place for God. Not only do we search all over the place for God in church, but we search all over the place for God in our ordinary daily living. It's, it's kind of remarkable that there is so much church shopping that goes on in our world today. Uh, so many folks uh, circle in and circle out of congregations, uh, specifically when congregations disappoint us. And believe me, sometimes it's hard when congregations disappoint us. Uh, but there is so much trying to search out this perfect God, this perfect relationship with God. And we search always, it seems, we search on the outside rather than looking within. We search all over the place for God. I had a, had a fridge sticker uh, that uh, said, I found Jesus. He was behind the sofa all the time. <laughs> it's just a reminder that we, we constantly look out for places. We look for Jesus in sometimes the most unusual places. 
Because we've been taught through our theology that this God that we believe in, this God that we understand, is a God who is somehow out here. Somehow we have to go searching. Somehow we have to go looking. And certainly that was an, a, a Hebrew experience or a Hebrew understanding. But even in the Hebrew writings, the, the psalmist reminds us, I, I go to the, to the hills and I look for God. And I, I go into the mountains and I look for God. But God's still voice is present all the way through. That the scripture reminds us today that it's not the God that we look for on the outside. It is the God that we must look for on the inside this morning. That it is this God who is in us this morning that we must come searching for. We, we don't look, we, we, we must resist the temptation of always having to look, because, and I think it's easier. I think it's easier for us to look for a God on the outside. Because when we look for a God on the outside, then we can blame God for all sorts of things. We can, we can blame God. You know, when, when something disastrous happens in our world, it's easy to say, well, uh, that's God's fault. And we abdicate responsibility for what happens in our world over and over again because we're constantly believing in this theology that God is somehow out there and not in here. As those of us who claim the presence of Jesus in our lives, not only is Jesus in us, not only is the Holy Spirit in us, not only is God in us, but God is us. God is us. But, but if we truly believe that, and I love the applause this morning, but if we truly believe that, hold on a second, because <laughs> if we truly believe that and we truly testify to that in our own bodies this morning, then that means that there is an awesome responsibility upon us, an awesome responsibility to behave and to act and to become godlike in all of our ways. It is this Holy Spirit that fills us from the bottom of our feet to the very tips of our, of our heads. It is that Holy Spirit that manifests Himself, Herself, God's Self, all of God's Self in us, calling us no longer to look for blame or to attribute something to the outside, but to look within and say, what is it that I am doing? What is it that I am manifesting? What is it that I am being called to in the world to be God today, to manifest that God's presence? So, so when we, we talk about the, the veterans who are standing in line for their VA benefits, we, we can't just blame society or blame culture. We have to look to ourselves and say, what role do I have to play in transforming this world? When we look to folks who are out on our streets, homeless on our streets, night after night, with mental health issues and mental illness, we can't just walk by without calling ourselves into account and saying, the God in me, the God in me has to welcome and greet the God in others. And we as a people of faith, we as a congregation of justice and peace must remind ourselves over and over again that whilst we might want to talk about the love of God, there is a responsibility to the love that God gives to us. You see, the Scripture teaches us today that this gift is given to us, this, this Godness is in us, but it's given with a request, or rather I should say it's given with an order. It says, I will be with you forever if... If you love God, if you keep my commands, if you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and if you love your neighbor in the same way that you love yourself. You see, we're guaranteed this gift if we will do the hard work on loving God, loving self, and loving others. That it is the God within us that is made manifest when we commit to those commands. And we're so grateful to grab hold of this God and say, yes, I'll, I'll welcome you, I'll love you, but we don't want to do the hard work on the other side of this equation. We don't want to live up to the standards that God gives to us. But we're so grateful when we can just take a piece of God just when we need it. It's almost like sticking our hand into the cookie jar as a reward and not thinking that we needed to do some hard work in order to get that reward in the first place. Not that I believe that this God is a God of reward. But in our culture, that is what we have been experiencing. And that is what we have come to understand. But the scripture today reminds us that this is God in us. I love that phrase that says, if I ruled the world. 
How many of you have heard that? You've probably heard the song or, you know, what a, what a world it would be. I've often thought to myself, what would it be like if I ruled the world? <laughs> well, those of you who know me, you know it would be fabulous. <laughs> but, but, well, it would be very different if I ruled the world. Let's, put it, let's just go that far. But have you, have you ever thought to yourself, you know, what would, it, what would it be like if you were God? What would this world look like if you were God? What, what would be some of the things that you would change, that you would hope for, that you would dream about if you were God? Because it's not rhetorical. Come on, shout back at me. Come on, I want to know. What would this world be like if you were God? How would it be different? It would be peaceful and green. Accepting. Accepting. No homeless, no hunger, equality, compassionate, everyone's gay. <laughs> For some of us, it would make things a lot easier, but I'm not sure. Sorry? No sickness. Found for everybody. Jobs for everybody. Thank you. No mental illness. No hunger. No neglected children. No neglected children. This is a great list. You know, we could always put this under our vision statement about who we, no war. Friends, do you hear what we are saying this morning? That if we are God, if we have the Spirit of the living God within us, all of these are possible, but we fail to claim our power in the Holy Spirit when we don't subscribe our lives to these changes and to these transformations, and we abdicate that responsibility to somebody else to do. We are told that God has no feet but ours, no hands but ours, no mouth but ours, no mind but ours, no embodiment but ours. And if those things are true, then we cannot wait for others to make these changes in the world. We must claim the Holy Spirit's power within each and every one of us to bring about those changes and to commit ourselves as people of faith, not just to be pleasant on Sunday, but to be pleasant on every day and every aspect of our lives so that the true symbol of Christ is building up and over and overflowing out of our lives and into the transformed places of this world. That is the job of the Holy Spirit. Those early disciples, when they were driven out of that immediate room, found themselves not just speaking in tongues, but laying hands on people, and they were healed. Found that they were able to converse with folks of different cultures and different ethnicities and different diversities and different living experiences, and they shared some things in common. And the things that they shared in common was this love of God. This love of God, love of self, and love that was being transformed to others in our world. Friends, we can't keep looking behind the sofa, or, or we can't keep looking somewhere else for God. We must claim the God consciousness, the God self that lives in each and every one of us. And if we do that, then be prepared. Hold on to your hat. Hold on to your britches because transformation comes when we claim the presence of God in our lives. I sometimes think there's a bit of a conspiracy going on in our world, a conspiracy to keep us all busy. Any one of you living in this life knows just how busy life is. Everything about life seems to be on a schedule. Not only do we have PDAs now that go off for 15 minutes before an appointment to remind you that you should have been there and you're still 40 minutes away because you forgot. You know, there was those things that happened to us in our lives to keep us busy. I think that there are many things in this world that can keep us busy. I had another sticker on my fridge and it said, Jesus is coming, look busy. Because the church teaches us, keep busy, keep busy, keep busy. The life teaches us, keep busy, keep busy, keep busy. And as a church and as a community, we are kept very busy. We do an amazing amount of things as a congregation. You know, today we'll be taking a second offering, as we always do on the last Sunday of the month for our Helping Hands ministry. 
uh, to help with those of, of, of struggling with our Paul Gromberg Fund, with our Laundry Love, where we offer free laundry once a month to the homeless and the working poor, where we feed people through our food pantry and through our Brown Bag Sunday lunch program. And we keep ourselves really busy with some of the justice issues this month, if I'm correct, and I'll ask, I'll just get a nod out of our Minister of Congregational Life with us, but this month I think we're bringing in toiletries and things like that, or is that another month? There'll be another month, we'll do something different. But we do backpack drives and we do all sorts of incredible things to keep ourselves busy. And as a church, we do a great job at pulling people out of the water. You know, we do a great job at helping people up, getting them out of the water, finding the, the situations in their lives where we can pull people up out of the water. And, and in our community, there's enough reasons to keep pulling people out of the water, not just with our mental health team that's just been established, not with just all the programs that we, we, we manifest, but through the rooms and the meeting halls that go on in our church building and, and all of the phones that get answered and so many different ways in which we help to pull people out of the water. But I want to tell you, I think it's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy of keeping us busy so that there is no time for us to look upstream and see the systems of oppression that continue to throw people into the water in the first place. That means that we have to be keep fishing them out of the water a little bit further downstream. And I'm grateful to our Minister of Social Justice who keeps reminding us of the many ways in which those systems of oppression continue to throw us under the bus and to deprive us. You know, we are building more and more prisons in this country than ever before. And those folks who are going to probably end up in those prisons are some of the most disadvantaged in their childhood and youth times, deprived of education, deprived of their needs, based on race usually, in order that they may be filling those places as they are getting built. Prison should never be seen as an industry, nor should health care in this country should never be seen as an industry. Yet, yet how much time do we really have to focus on the systems of oppression when we are just so busy fishing people out of the water and giving them a helping hand? I, I pray for the day when we will be able to fish so many people out of the water and get them well and get them whole and to fill them with the Holy Spirit and to find their God self that we'll have the time to figure out the systems of oppression that continue to manipulate human beings and to continue to force them into these systems in the first place. Until then, of course, we must fish people out of the water, and we must find those mechanisms one day when the body of Christ could come together. Perhaps we'll spend less time arguing theologically amongst denominations and find a way where we can be a uniting church of Christ. Remember, I didn't say the united church of Christ. Okay. All the disciples of Christ but the uniting church of Christ. And the dream is that we'll be able to share hands one across the aisle with the other. And in our systems as denominations and as movements, find ways in which we can tackle the very top of the pile that continues to throw us under the bus and deprive us of what we need in this world. It is the job of the Holy Spirit but the job of the Holy Spirit is not out there. It's in you, and it's in me. Amen. It's in each and every one of us. And that Spirit commands us to love God, to keep God's commands, to love God. That's love God. And to love others. So that ultimately this world might be redeemed by this God that is in each and every one of us, from the very youngest child to the very eldest adult, not one of us is excluded. So claim that God space this morning. Claim yourself as God here on earth. And those dreams, if I ruled the world, they can become real when we draw ourselves together knowing that we are better together and we are stronger together as the body of Christ.
May God be honored through this word. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving and passionate one, you who was passionate in Jesus continues to be passionate in each and every one of us as we open our lives this morning to this sense of I am in you and you are in me. That our hands are God's hands, our legs are God's legs, our feet are God's legs, but they are not the God that is out there. They are the God that lives within us. It is us. So help us to claim that this morning, so that in claiming our experience with you, we may not only just transform our lives, may not just transform our community, might not just transform our church, may not just transform this street, may not just transform Los Feliz, we may not just, just transform Los Angeles, but we might indeed transform the world through this presence of you in us. So may that be our mission, our vision, and our compassion for this world. And now, gracious one, I pray that you would take the words that have come from my mouth and allow them to return to you without transforming us, filling us, inspiring us, challenging us, calling us to our better selves so that we may truly show up in this world as God. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
So we heard, I am in you and you're in me. So we're all in this together. And sometimes I check to see if there's anything up there. And thank you. Um, a long time ago, you know, we see the LGBT a lot, and you see I put a little tiny T up there. I wasn't quite sure that the T was on the bus. The LGB bus was becoming very powerful and very persuasive. And then we became a little stronger. And I just wanted to point out that in a couple of weeks' time, we will see the T coming first to shine the light on the bigotry and the hatred and the hate crimes that has been pervasive in our society. So thank you, LA Pride. We will be there. So this call to offering, it's with tremendous gratitude that we've come this far. And we've already, we recognize that there are people who are in a state of hopelessness, the state of despair, there are those who are financially impoverished, impoverished. there are those who are suffering from mental illness, there are those who are searching. And for all of those, those are part of us. So we have to recognize in this holy moment that our giving is what sustains this effort. We can't rely on our elected politicians all the time, sometimes not even any of the time. So my favorite reading so far in the last few months has been this book, Living Buddha, Living Christ, by this Zen Buddhist monk, I'm sure you're all aware of his work, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh. And he has this beautiful, simple word. He says it for us. We must practice living deeply, loving and acting with charity if we wish to truly honor Jesus. That is what we do. We're acting with charity if we wish to truly honor Jesus. And this is our holy moment. And I'm reminded that we have two offerings today. Pray with me. 
Dear loving God, we are all in this together. So we are gathered here today, brought together by your love and mercy. Let our gifts given in this holy moment help those who have been left behind. And so it is. Amen. 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 Please. Friends, as we come to this table, we come to this table with a lot of gratitude. A lot of gratitude. You know, there's some challenges going on recently, and I, and I said, well, it's all good. And somebody said, oh, no, it's not good. <laughs> but it's the way it is right now. And I went, amen. amen. You know what? It may not be all good for us right now. But it is what it is. And God is with us in it. Amen? Amen. And so it's with that, a sense of gratitude that God is with us no matter if it's great or if there's a lot of challenges that we come to this table. You know, our theme for pride is transformation. Transformation. And prayer is what indeed helps to transform us, each and every one of us. So I'm going to ask us to go to God now in prayer to ask to be transformed, and to be that person of transformation in this world. Let's go to God in prayer. <sighs> Beloved Creator, indeed you are with us. You have been with us in the good and in the not so good. But you have been with us just as it is. And we are grateful for your presence. We are grateful that you have transformed our lives, that you have transformed our minds to, to realize that you indeed are within each and every one of us. For those of us who can't quite accept that yet, I, I pray for further transformation. That no matter where we are on our journey, if we are just beginning healing or if we are somebody who has received a 30-year chip. We are all in the transformation business. I ask you, God, to be with each and every one of us to allow ourselves to come forward as agents of healing and agents of change, to act with you in the center of all that we do, to truly be God in this world, to be Christ in this world. And I pray that that begins with each of us sitting here. It is, and you are with us in this moment, present in this moment. And we are so grateful. If there are those among us who are just admitting that there are mental health issues that they have to deal with, uh, be with them right now. Give them strength and courage to say, I need a hand. For those who are present amongst us going through some type of transition in their lives, we ask that you transform them and give them strength, letting them know that they are not alone in this journey. For those who are celebrating recovery, for those who are celebrating new lives, for those who are celebrating success and victory over their past. We thank you, God. But most of all, we thank you that we are allowing ourselves to be transformed, our minds to be open, our hearts to be open, to be you in this world. Blessings as we come to this table with open hearts, with blessed hearts. In your precious name I pray and ask these things. Amen. 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 I, I just am so blessed, so blessed to stand here with this angel and before all of you. Um, I love, I just love to stand here and see you. I greet every one of you at the door, but what a different, what a different face I see as I stand here. Mm -hmm. I see all these beautiful faces here living the transformation. That's right. You know, transformation, it's not once. It doesn't happen 
suddenly in like a dream. It's not like one magic moment, you know, as, as, as a television and movies would have us believe. Transformation just happened for me as I was listening to that prayer. Transformation will happen for me later this afternoon when, I, when I'm challenged because I left here and the world is going to come at me. The world is going to is continue to be the world. I had the great pleasure, the great honor of not being here last week. And in that not being here, I really realized what being here means, how very important it is. And I was with amazing men having a spiritual experience and discussing God, discussing spirit, discussing coming to believe that God would restore us to sanity. It was challenging, it was hard, and sometimes it was really difficult to be the person in the room, the only person at some times to be in the room speaking God's truth and standing behind it and saying, even if all of you coming to me and saying, you may be wrong, or I don't believe, I can still stand strong. Still stand strong, not because I got something, not because I'm so great, but because all of you, because all of you give me the strength, one day at a time, one minute at a time, one moment at a time. That transformation, that transformation that happened that night, that night in that upper room. That transformation from you are less than, you are in service to, but not being served, to you are God. That's a major thing to state. To state. At that time, how dare you say such a thing? And yet here was this man, this blood and flesh man, standing there as God before before his friends, before his family. And he took the bread at this gathering, blessed it. He brought it before God and he broke it as a symbol of what he was gonna go through. What he was willing to walk through. What are you willing to walk through? In this moment, what are you willing to walk through? And he offered it, he offered it to his brothers and sisters as we offer it to each other today. He said, eat, eat of this. Take a part in this. This is my body. It will be broken for you, for all men, for all women, for all of us, so that your sins may be forgiven and so that you may have a blessed life. And like he took the cup, and he also blessed it. And he did the most incredible thing. He took that sacred cup and he passed it to all the God in the room. Every single person who showed up that day found out the big secret. And the big secret was is that you are God. As our pastor said today, you are God incarnate. Here you are. And he offered it to them. He said, this is my blood. This is my life essence. Here it is for you. It will be shed for you and for all man, so that your sins may be forgiven, and so that when you miss the mark, you know that there is, there is comfort and there is home right here, right here in me, and right here in you. Will you all join me in, actually in a silent prayer? Let's have a moment of silence for all of those, for all of those who have sacrificed from that day, from the great sacrifice, to all of those who sacrifice for us every day in other countries and in other places so that, we, so that we have the freedoms to sit here and to glorify God. So will you please take a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all of those who have gone before us. Thank you for all of those who will go ahead of us. Thank you for all of the people, all of our brothers and sisters, our fathers, our mothers, our cousins, and all of those that we don't know, especially those that we don't know, who have enough faith to step forth and say no to oppression, say no to hate, 
and protect us. We take this day to memorialize them, to celebrate them, and to celebrate you, to celebrate this table, to celebrate everything that you have made possible for every one of us. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for all the gifts yes. we're about to receive. In God's precious name, in the name of Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And friends, a transformative moment awaits you. You are all welcome, all of us, to this table, every single one of us. In a moment, the ushers will guide you to stations in the front of the sanctuary as well as in the balcony, where it will be our tradition to take the elements, dip it in non-alcoholic grape juice, place it upon your tongue, or you may take and dip and receive yourself, and then we offer a brief blessing for you. If you would like to come forward this morning and just uh, just have the elements just you between you and God, we are invited to do that as well, for there will be a consecrated station to your right to which you might go at any time during communion. But friends, this is about giving yourself permission to have a moment of transformation, to be reminded in a tangible form that God is within us, this moment and in every moment of our day. For those who are worshiping with us online, please go to the bread, the juice, whatever elements that you brought forward and, and just commune with God. Be intentional about sharing this meal. There is no one who is left out. Stay where you are or come forward. We are all keeping this feast with the one who gave it to us, Jesus the Christ, God our creator, Holy Spirit, sustainer of all. Amen? Amen. May the servers and acolytes please join.
So you hear the words we sung, awesome, glory, power, fill this place. I pray that we might be able to translate that this morning to awesome, glory, power, fill this place. Go into the world and remember, you are God. So before we leave this morning, we'd remind you, of course, that refreshments are served in the courtyard directly after worship. And today is also the uh, monthly fundraising brunch with the pastor at Acapulco. Uh, we'll be meeting there at about uh, between 1 and 1.15. It's just down on Sunset Boulevard. It's a full brunch, and a percentage of that ticket was returned to the church as a way of fundraising. So please do join me. I will look silly arriving on my own today. No, it's a fundraising brunch. <laughs> and now into God's gracious mercy and protection each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God known to us as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.
us online, you are an extension of this church's membership ministry, our extended fellowship. Whether you're tuning in from Los Angeles, London, Tokyo, or Zimbabwe, wherever you are in the world, we are so excited to embrace you, to hear from you, and to pray for you. All of the people you've just seen in this broadcast, not just the ministers and the choir, but every person sitting on those pews, we are here for you. So please, why don't you connect with us? Interact with us. We have four ways you can do that. Telephone, email, Facebook, and Twitter. And all of those links are located at the bottom of every webpage of our website at mccla.org. With your help, we can not just continue, but expand and reach a greater number of people with God's love through this ministry. Be a video angel amongst us by supporting this ministry through our donate link located just under the support menu in the upper right corner of any page of our website. Your participation is very important. And I want to invite you to write to me and let me know how I can be in prayer and praise with you. Even though you are not here in our worship center, you are still a part of MCCLA. Email me directly at revneal at mccla.org. May God bless your life. And I look forward to welcoming you back many, many times to MCCLA and our weekly live broadcast. You 